Okay, we're going to try to show you how to use the online GeoGebra graphing calculator to make a tessellation that's dynamic, where you can change the points and the uh, tiles will still fill the plane with no gaps and no overlaps. So if you just go to GeoGebra.org, you can select Start the Calculator, and it'll take you here to the online calculator. A lot of times when I'm making things in GeoGebra, I like to use the downloaded version. It's classic five, you have a lot of control over the objects, but if you don't have it downloaded, everybody has access to the web calculator um, just in your browser. We're gonna be doing geometry, so we don't need the keyboard, and um, we don't need the axes, and we don't need the grid. Well, you can always leave it there, there's nothing wrong with that. And we're gonna be using these geometry tools. So if you look, there's kind of a few basic ones here, but in the more, we're gonna need more. So um, if you're making a tessellation, the first thing is to start with uh, the shape you want and have some idea of the motions you're gonna use um, to have it fill the plane. One of my favorite things in all of geometry is that every triangle and every quadrilateral tessellate to fill the plane by rotating around the midpoints of their sides. Um, so here in GeoGebra, it's easy to make sure that this works. There's a midpoint tool. When you click a tool, it tells you what you need to do. Select two points or a segment, a circle or a conic, and it'll find the center of that. It's a lot of functionality combined in one. So we can find these midpoints. And we can see that uh, transformations are down here near the bottom. And we rotate, select an object and the center point, and then the angle. So 180 degrees, because we want the edge to match up with itself. 180 degrees. Degrees, and we get a larger version of the triangle. We get it similar um, with a scale of two. And that's one of the ways that we know that this is going to tessellate. Um, so when a shape does this, kind of you can fit together copies to make a larger version of itself. Um, it has one of the cutest names in math. It's called reptiling sometimes. Um, we know right away it's going to tessellate uh, because now we could take four of these size triangles and fit them together to make a larger one. Four of those fit them together and make a larger one until we've covered the entire plane. So um, uh, any tile that reptiles, we know that's going to work out. And triangles, every triangle reptiles. Whenever you've been using another tool, the selection tool, the move tool, will pop up there in the corner to make it easy to switch back. And we can change our original triangle and still see that this relationship holds. Okay, but I promised you MC Escher style tessellations. So for that, we're not gonna have a basic triangle. Uh, we want more complicated edges. But we did have to have an idea of the basic shape and the motions that we we're gonna use. So I'm just going to reload the calculator to get rid of everything. And so we are, want kind of our triangle, and we need the more tools. We still need the midpoints. Oh, one thing I meant to point out, um, yours may have looked a little different. There might have been a lot of stuff labeled. So I am going to um, look at the settings. And under the general settings here, one of the options is for what is going to be labeled. So if you had a lot of things labeled, um, you might want to come here and change the setting, either to automatic 
or to no new objects or new points only. Um, so uh, I have just new points only for what we're going to be using, but um, that's one way to have it kind of neater. Uh, you can also select You can also um, select things in the calculator view and make adjustments here from the settings or by showing and unshowing things. Um, but that's kind of a fine point. All right, so we want, instead of just making our triangle ABC, we want to imagine, like MC Escher, we're going to cut a chunk out. And what Escher figured out is that if he takes a piece out, he has to move it to uh, the, with the same motion he's going to use to fit the tiles together. And that was that midpoint rotation. So instead of rotating the whole shape around this point, we're going to rotate these kind of control points. Okay, so you can kind of see if we rotate it around this point F, 180 degrees, we can see that the piece we cut out is going to go with the piece we taped on. So we just want to do that around the other side, so we need some more points. Let's put uh, one point on this side, and we'll go whole hog, and we'll do three points on this side. Okay, we have to transform those. Okay, this is going to be a complicated looking polygon. Uh, we do want to make the polygon. So if we start out, we select all the vertices we want. If we click an incorrect one at one point, you can click it again and it will unselect it. You don't have to include F because it's always that midpoint of the rotations. I'm just going to try to work our way around here. And end on the point we started on. Oh, so we get this kind of nice duck shape. Okay, so we're going to rotate it around the midpoints. Um, something I've learned from experience, if we have the points showing, um, they'll show up in the transformed copy. So I'm just going to quickly go through here and turn off all these points. We'll leave D, E, and F. Those are the midpoints we need to want to transform by rotation around a point. 180 degrees because we want it to match up with itself. side works. Okay, so this is not a reptile anymore because we didn't get a kind of a larger similar version, but we did get um, this kind of nice tight fit, no gaps, no overlaps, and that pattern is going to continue. So if we wanted to put on more of these tiles, we need the points to rotate around. Uh, well, those can come from if we rotate around the midpoints we're using, it will put the corresponding point on the new shape. And that would be one reason to include them in your polygon because then they would have shown up when we did the transformation.
as you're making things, you might always think of what would be a more efficient way to make it the next time. All right. So here we have our tessellation going. We could, same way, transform E around these points and uh, continue this uh, tessellation out for as many pieces as we wanted. Uh, we can control the color of these shapes. We change back to the select tool. We can change the color of these shapes if we are on the move tool. So we add a little more variety to our Okay, and we've got kind of three of our duck shape, and then uh, this looks more like a cardinal or a different kind of bird. Um, but we want to be able to control this tessellation, so we're going to go back to turn on our control points. And what you get here over here on the algebra side is kind of a complete record of all these different things you've made. We're going to turn on the points that control that original triangle. We don't need this D, E, and F anymore for the motions. The G, H, that was the one side. The I, the J, the K, and the L. And I think that's all the points we need to um, control. We don't want to throw that out. We want the settings. Oh, this is the show hide. Well, that's the point style. Okay. So here we have our tessellation and we can change our points and change what we've made. Oh, that's not super nice there. Now we're working. We have kind of sharks and whales. All right, and that's how to make a, a midpoint rotation tessellation. Um, you could also uh, make other tessellations just by knowing your shape you're starting with and then transforming the vertices to control it using the same motions you're going to use uh, to move the tiles. Well, that's it. Hope you have a chance to play in GeoGebra.